like to welcome you to the first performance reading of The Two Fairies' Daughter. Uh, just to, to give you an idea, this is a work in progress. And so if you've looked at your programs, on the last page there's a questionnaire. And we afterward are going to have some refreshments, some cake and, and what have you, and we would love for you to stay afterward and join us in refreshments. And if you feel, feel like it, and we would love to receive the comments, um, give us your thoughts, share with us, because this is a, a work that is progressing. We are going to take this work to New York, to the Dramatist Guild on Monday. Um, but we would like very much to hear what you think about it. Uh, the other thing I would ask is that you not take flash photographs during the performance because we will be videotaping it. Have a great time. Thanks. The Tooth Fairy's Daughter. The time is the present. There are five locations, the copy room of Gromitz Incorporated, the Glen, where the fairies gather, the Hall of Trolls, the Human Park, which is separated from the Fairy Glen, more by awareness than space or time, and the bridge approaching the Troll Den. Act One. At Rise, there is a Tooth Fairy seated on a ladder. Standing next to a gazebo in the park, he is seated cross-legged facing the audience. You don't believe in the tooth fairies? You don't believe in tooth fairies at all? Oh, St. Patty, help them. Oh, you folks are so dead. I mean, in the physical sense. All these years, and you still can't even see us. I think that must be the main problem. Hard to believe in something you, you can't see. I like flying. You probably don't believe we can do that either. A workman comes over and, ignoring the Tooth Fairy, removes the ladder from underneath him. This does not, however, affect the Tooth Fairy's cross-legged position in the air. <laughs> See, there's a prime example. You know, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. I remember when you first came to this planet. And I remember before that. You weren't always stuck in the ground. a time when you sang in the song, played in the sound of the wind. You have forgotten the way it began. Come, let us sing once again. We are the people who live in the moment, the glorious moment that lasts for eternity. All oh, but the children Employment for a tooth fairy's magic that was quite in the day. Once before time, we all played in the garden, a garden of friendship where no one refused to play. Then some decided to come to the star and began to play games on the planet of the Things 
fairy glen superimposed over the human park. Where the park is bare, the fairy glen is lush with plants. How can I ignore the fact that your 18th birthday is in one month? One month and four days. What's the difference? Very soon you'll be 18, and on that day, you will be initiated into the fairy I'm host. sure I'll be too busy that day. Katie? If I'm initiated, I'll have to go out every night with the host to collect children's teeth. Oh, dull. No way, I'm not going. Katie, we do children a great service. We make losing that first tooth less frightening with a small gift and a little magic. I am not interested. What's the big deal about losing a tooth anyway? It doesn't hurt. The children don't know that. Our job is to help turn on the light of their imagination. The light of my imagination is already on, and I don't care to turn anyone else's on. Thank you. Count me out. You are the most frustrating. OK, okay. Uh, I'll see you later at the dance. A great night, if I say so myself. Had to get out of the way of a couple of eastbound airliners. I wish those guys would look where the heck they're going. Hey, but what's a little risk for a tooth fairy like me? Were you flying your designated route? Oh, uh, well, you Darwin. see... Darwin! Uh, inclement weather? Solid cloud cover? Uh, we were forced to change routes in order to see better. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's hard to see the Red Sox when you're not supposed to be flying over Fenway Park. <laughs> Did you go to a baseball game after I expressly told you not to? I... Clench your feet! I'm not done with you. I'm not going to turn you into a frog yet. Come here, Gorwin. What you do on your own time is your business, but when you fly with this host, I won't permit self-interest to interfere with our mission. You are the leader of your troop, no less. But, but Your Majesty, we met our quota. We're not here to collect teeth. It's not what you do, but how you do it. Were you thinking of the children and how your presence brings them joy, or were you thinking about Jose Canseco? <laughs> Our whole purpose here is to help balance the fear and anger this young world puts out. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. It won't happen again. I know you're sorry. But my job is to help you to remember. You are hereby demoted to assistant troop leader, and you will remain grounded when you are not with the host for one month. Uh, but so you... be it. Now... Where were we? We were talking about your initiation. I don't want to be initiated. I don't want to be a tooth fairy. I want to be a disc jockey and talk to millions of people on the radio. <laughs> you wanted to be a dancer yesterday, and last week it was a deep sea diver. We have many <coughs> glorious powers, Katie, but we are who we are, tooth fairies. What about Michaela? We don't talk about Michaela. Oh, yes, you do. You just try to talk about her when you think none of the preemies can hear you. She got kicked out of the host, didn't she? No, Katie, she wasn't kicked out. She chose to renounce her fairy powers and become mortal. How did she do that? I didn't know it was possible. It's not usually talked about. Oh, you just have to tell me, Father. Come on, I'm all ears. Where were those ears a few minutes ago? Oh, come on, Father. Now, just, you got to tell me how she did it. She met a human, fell in love, and married him. And? And we were talking about your being initiated into this host no in one No way. You can't stop there. Come on, make yourself comfortable. How did she meet him? How could he even see her? With love, anything's possible, even our becoming visible to humans. She first saw him on her rounds one night when taking that first tooth from under his daughter's pillow. He was already married? No, Katie. His wife had just died. Oh. How'd she die? I don't know. Did the man see Michaela then? Did he capture her and lock her up? No, Katie. Your mother told me that Michaela found the man crying and went back to check on him. Your mother and Michaela were very close. At some point, Michaela caused herself to become visible to the man. He fell in love with her, and they were married. That's it. 
Wait, Father, what happened to her? Where is she now? She became a part of the human host. She lived, she had a child, she got older, and she finally died. Humans can't choose when they're ready to cross over, can they? That's one of the limitations humans have accepted. It's also one of the reasons it's so dangerous for you to go exploring in the human world. When Michaela chose to become part of the human evolution, she forfeited her fairy heritage. Everything? Yes, Katie, everything. Flying, dances, and everything. When Michaela died, it so saddened your mother that within a short time, she decided to cross over as well. I don't want to lose you. Mother's not lost. She just chose another assignment. Isn't that what you told me? No, she's not lost, but I'm not finished here yet, so I can't leave. Your mother and I don't talk so much these days. Knowing a thing and feeling a thing doesn't always go together, even for us fairies. Anyway, you can see how dangerous it would be to become involved with the human host. Was the man handsome? <laughs> talking to you is like talking to, to a rock. You will be initiated, and that's, that's all I'm going to say. For now. Katie, do this. Katie, do that. People are always telling me what I absolutely must do. Well, I'm absolutely tired of doing what other people want me to do. Even Father. I want to do what I absolutely want to do. I want to see things. I'm close. I don't just want to go to a baseball game. I want to play. I want to be on the stage. Maybe I'll even be in a movie. I can sing, I can dance. Sometimes I can see the man in the radio talking to all those people in their homes and in their cars. They're all listening to him at the same moment. <sighs> Hardly anyone will listen to me here. I am almost 18, old enough to know that all the world is just waiting for me. I think I'm all grown up. He thinks I'm a child. I wish there was a place we could meet. You can't do this. Well, you better do that. Don't forget to be here. Be on time. Thank you, dear. Won't you be what I want you to be? No, I don't think I can. Clean up your room. Keep the clothes off the floor. Clear the food off your plate. And do stay out too late. Won't you be what I want you to be? No, I building with the radio station. All these tall buildings look the same to me. Katie, remember to be here early for the opening ceremonies. Your Majesty. What? You need to go over the CD chart. Do you remember what happened between the ogres and the wood praise at the last centennial? Very messy. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, I think if we put the flower host next to the ogres on one side and the water sprites on the other, we'll minimize the ogres' uh, aggressive tendencies. <laughs> the uh, ogres on one side to uh, balance the sm fragrance and the water sprites on the other because their sense of smell is limited to the water. Maybe we could water their wine a little. No, they'd notice that and then we'd really be in for it. <laughs> Your Majesty? Maybe she has a hearing problem. No, she's hearing me all right. Excuse me, sire. What? Oh, oh yes, yes, the, the ogres. Uh, yes, your majesty, I think if we just put them... Damn the ogres! Uh, put them wherever you like. What else do you want? Well, if this is a bad time, I can come back, sire. It's hard to get people to stop disappearing nowadays. Yes, sire, I'm here. Relax, I'm not angry with you. Come back this afternoon and we'll work it out. At least you listen. Yes, your majesty. I wish she'd listen. Such a daughter and a father, 
never seeing eye to eye. Every time I say hello to her, I'm hearing a goodbye. Where are all the smiles and laughter that I never thought would stop? I'm the one who's changed, just ask her. Every time we talk, disaster. Who's the slave and who's the master? She says I'm a traffic cop. What's a traffic cop? <laughs> I remember being younger than the willows and the wind. Still I try but fail to understand this chasm that won't mend. I could make the earth obey me with a wave of either hand. Yet I'm helpless as a baby for respect I can't command. Every time I think I see the light, the cloud blocks out the sun. All we ever do these days is fight. It is surely not much fun. Still I think of all the times we sat the starry night above. I can trust that we'll come by and by where we meet our love. I can trust that we'll seated on the park bench. Max is holding the string to a kite. Em does not speak, and Max is trying to get her excited about kite flying. Hey, Em, isn't this great? Oh, look at that kite fly. I can't believe the lift in the wind today. Can you? Here, you want to hold it? Em, you can't just hold the string. You have to feel the wind. The kite needs to fly, and the wind is there to help you, but you have to bring them together. Here, watch. Look at that kite soar. Doesn't it just make you want to be up there too? Doesn't it make you feel anything, Em? When are you gonna talk to me, little sister? It's almost two years now. They're not coming back. But hey, we're doing all right. Em, it was just an accident. I don't know why they're gone, but you and I are still here. Mostly I'm here, and, and you're... Where are you, Em? I don't know what to do. If I ask for help, they'll just take you away from me. I'm sorry, Em. I'm, I'm just talking. There's no way I'd let anyone take you. It's you and me. One of these days, I'll be a famous pilot, and we'll have everything we want. Besides, we're doing pretty great right now. I got a job, we got a place. What more do we need? A smile, maybe? Oh, wow. Wow, I've never felt a wind this strong. This kite could lift you off the ground, Em. Oh, shoot. Lost it. And I just made that kite. Look, Em, it's still going up. It's gone. Where do you think it went? Can't you just imagine? Why don't you sit here while I explain, dear? There's a way to be free. All of the fears go, some of the tears go. There is a place where everyone knows when all of the days are left behind into a dream where nothing can hold you. Fly like a kite up over the grass till you feel the wind in your mind. Keep your eyes open wide, reach deep inside, and then you will know where the kite goes. Watch how the gold 
the lights glare, grow flying in every heart there. over New Jersey by now. The scene opens on a copy room on the second floor of Gromitz Incorporated. There is a battered desk on top of which is piled paperwork. Along the wall are carts and above the carts a wooden shelf of slots where the memos are sorted. You can come back to Earth now. Kim, what are you doing down here in the dungeon of duplication? <laughs> Please call me Kimberly. You know how I just hate Kim. It sounds so comedy. And that's Kimberly. Three syllables. Kimberly. <laughs> Kimberly. Okay. Okay, Kimberly. So why are you down here in the dungeon visiting the ogre? I came to get the ogre to go out to lunch. Kim. Kimberly, it's only 10 o'clock. I can't go out to lunch now. I don't even get a break until 10.30. My father is the president of this company, and I say you can go out to lunch at 10 o'clock. I have a job to do, and I can't do it if I'm not here. Some job? The copy room? My daddy offered you a bigger job with a bigger office. Why didn't you take it? Because I didn't earn it. Besides, I like working in the copy room. Nobody's yelling down here, except for you sometimes. Upstairs, there's always someone yelling. So what? You could be the one who's doing the yelling. I like the peace and quiet down here. I can be by myself and dream of things even more pleasant than the copy room. I know, flying. That's all you ever dream about, money for flying lessons. What about me? Would you ever dream of me? Sure, you're right there beside me in a Cessna 172, and we're flying over the Hudson River. I'll be back at 12 o'clock. You can go to lunch at 12 o'clock, can't you? Oh, and change those sneakers. They'll never let you in if you insist on wearing ratty sneakers. Sure, I'll see you at 12. Don't be so angry. It's a beautiful day. Katie comes in through the window, confident that no one can see her. Uh, uh, how did you get in here? Um, <laughs> that's my chair you're about to sit in. Uh, if you're expecting company, the only way in is that way? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's okay, it's okay if you can't talk. I'm, I'm not gonna hurt you. Katie tore back towards the wall. sits on the sill. Whoa, whoa, that's not the way out. It's only the second floor, but it's still too far to jump, wait! <laughs> oh, I'll go get the... That was strange. <laughs> Must be a high jumper. <laughs> Hope she's okay. <coughs> scene opens on the beginning of the opening ceremonies of the fairy centennial. The scene takes place in the fairy glen under strings of fireflies. But what if a human really could see you? Can't happen. A lot of it did. Katie, you've studied our history. Goes back to day one. No record of a fairy being seen by a human against the wishes of the fairy. It just doesn't happen. But what if it did? Okay, Katie, what happened? You've been out exploring again. Are you kidding? That wouldn't be very smart, would it? Hello, oh, Father. Hello, Your Majesty. If you'll excuse me. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. I've been around. Tonight's dance should be something special. That group of musicians from the Buffalo Host is here. Father, it's been a long day for me, and I'm really kind of tired. Nonsense. Look at all those eligible young men waiting to dance with you. A good, stable man will help you settle down. What a good idea, Father. Come. They're about to begin. 
It is with great pleasure and pride that I welcome you all to this, the 401st Centennial Celebration. We are glad to see our brothers and sisters again. Tomorrow, we will weigh and consider this past 100 years. But for tonight, let us be at peace and enjoy this fine company, which has gathered together again. the cliff for a flying reel. Uh, remember the good words. in through the window. She stays seated on the sill. It's around four o'clock in the afternoon. Do they have doors where you live? <laughs> oh, wait, please don't go. I'll just stay right here. Who are you? I'm a tooth fairy. Who are you? Bart Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> what does a Bart Simpson do? <clears throat> Call me Max. My name is Max. 
Earth to window person? <laughs> what planet are you from? <laughs> Earth, silly. Oh, what planet are you from? <laughs> <laughs> Time out here. Let's go back to the beginning and try this again. We're having a communication problem here. Hi, my name's Max. What's yours? My name's Katie. Just like we're regular people. I just love Fridays, don't you? Come on, let's get out of here. There's a new clothing store opening up downtown. It's called Marcel's. Imagine that. Pretty nervy to call the shop by a French name, like anything in there came from France. The cheek of some people. I suppose you're never going to have enough clothing stores, you think. Uh, uh, Kimberly, um, I'd like to introduce you to Katie. So, introduce me. Katie, this is Kimberly. Kimberly, meet Katie. Aren't you going to say hello? <laughs> what a kidder you are. <laughs> okay, I give up. Meet Mr. Windowsill. <laughs> Some kind of flying joke, isn't it? No, no joke. She, she just likes to come <coughs> in and out of windows. Who? Katie, the young woman who's seated on the windowsill. I think you've been changing too much toner. <laughs> Come on, Max, let's call it a day. I didn't get the joke, okay? By 5.15, that store is going to be packed. And you know how I hate mingling with the working people. I'm one of those working people, and I can't leave yet. It's only 4 o'clock. I work till 5.30. And if you'll remember, I already lost a half hour yesterday because of our lengthy lunch. Call in sick. You've got my vote. You can't expect me to hang around this dump until 5 o'clock. Kim, Kimberly, I'm not sick, and I'm not leaving till 5.30. Come back then and we'll go out. We'll see. Kimberly, uh, tell me, you, you really didn't see anyone sitting on the windowsill? Give it a rest, Max. You'd better stick with knock-knock jokes. <laughs> Uh, please don't leave. I, I won't hurt you. Okay? I will sit right here. Why didn't you say anything? You kind of left me hanging. Well, she wouldn't have heard me, and I'll tell you, it's a relief, too. I can't tell you how relieved I am. <laughs> I still don't understand how you can see and hear me, though. Who are you? <laughs> I told you. I'm a tooth fairy. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> okay. You're a friend of Kim's pranking me so that I'll leave early. Oh, <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, you got me, but, but I'm still not leaving until 5.30. So you don't have to climb out the window. You can use the door. <laughs> that was great. Mr. Harwood, Kim's father and the president of Gromitz Incorporated, enters. Max goes over to the copier and begins making copies. Uh, hello, Mr. Harwood. <clears throat> Kimberly told me that you were not well. Is that why you were just sitting there? Speaking to yourself? <laughs> Max, I think you need to sit down. <clears throat> uh, I'd really prefer not to. I've been sitting so much today. <laughs> You've been sitting a lot today? Oh, oh, well, no, I mean, I've been working hard and sitting a lot. <laughs> sit down, Max. Oh, I think I'll just sit here on the desk for a change. Sit in your chair! <laughs> Mr. Harwood, do you see anything unusual about this desk? You mean, other than the fact that you're acting very strangely today? <clears throat> Max, you're a bright young man and a hard worker. In fact, I think you've been working too hard. <laughs> yeah. Is there something wrong with your chair? Oh, no, sir. I just I just have a lot of work to still to do, and I, I would like to get to it. Well, that's my point, son. I think you should take it a little easier. Maybe you need some help down here. Stop doing that. Oh. <laughs> Not you, sir. Really, there's nothing to this job. I mean, I can handle the job. Ooh. Gotta have this place sprayed. <laughs> Is it always that bad? Let's go over by the window. The bugs are not so bad over there. <clears throat> I want you to take a few days off. Oh, but sir, I insist. 
I know you've been working very hard, my boy, and I pride myself in being a fair taskmaster. Why don't you go and enjoy the park? I hear it's beautiful this time of year, and Kimberly is waiting for you there. Mr. Howard, let me explain. Now, I... now, I won't hear another word. Out with you. Bugs! Maintenance is going to hear about this. <laughs> the scene opens on the park. There's a park bench where Kimberly is seated, waiting for Max. Well, you finally got me kicked out. Come on, Max. It's just for a few days. Think about the shopping we can do together. I don't need you making decisions for me. I'm not tired. You just need more attention. No, oh, that's the thanks I get for getting you off work. I like working. And besides, I need the money for flying lessons. Instead of sitting on this bench, I could be up in the clouds. You're always in the clouds. Earth to Max. None of the people I know think like you. There's no silver lining in the clouds. You've got to sweat for every dollar. Unless you're lucky enough to be born with all you need. Or smart enough to marry into the right family. Kim, there are things that money can't buy. My name is Kimberly, and I haven't found anything I want that I can't buy. Well, let me introduce you to the first. I just realized how dull it would be being owned by you. You think you can just say goodbye and that's it? Don't count on having a job when you get back. Goodbye, Kim. <sighs> Why can't I just be who I am? Instead of who she thinks I should be. Where are all the questions? I've got all the questions. There must be a way to see. When she she provides the answers They're just not the ones for me Jump when I ask you Never mind where to It doesn't matter when you belong to me You can do just what I want No, I don't think I can Go to the right show Sit in the first row Keep your eyes open People are right, Jesus You can do just what I want No, I don't think I can teach you wherever you're from that it's rude to eavesdrop? I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. You sing pretty well. Thanks. But wait a minute. How long were you here? Long enough. You got the whole soap opera? Yep. And... What? Don't you feel the least bit responsible for the fact that I am now unemployed? Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, that. It didn't look like you enjoyed what you were doing. Did you? It wasn't so bad. But what does that have to do with anything? Boy, are you human, Stead. Sooner or later, you have to do the work that you are called to do by your nature. By who you really are. Nothing else will really work out. It may not look like fun until you actually do it, but you can tell it's right by how excited you get when you think about it. <sighs> At least that's what my father says. I haven't been initiated yet, so I don't really know for sure. What do you like to do the most? I like to fly. Oh, me too! Oh, I didn't think humans could fly. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? Haven't you ever been in an airplane? Those big, ugly things? Why would I want to get into one of those? Ooh, I have enough trouble staying out of their way. How, how do you fly? Nothing to it. <laughs> you really are a fairy. <laughs> I, I mean, you can fly? You can fly? How do you... You don't need an airplane? You, you mean you can be the clouds whenever you want? 
I can't learn how to do this, can I? <laughs> you need to belong to certain fairy hosts. Not all fairies fly, you know? I, I don't understand. I mean, you're so, so big. Excuse me? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean big, big. What did I, you mean? I meant, well, I thought fairies were about this big. <laughs> you mean like Tinkerbell? You know her? <laughs> oh, silly. We read too, you know. Mr. Barry knew a lot more than he ever told in his stories. You humans take one example and you stretch it out to cover everything and everyone. There really are fairies this size? More like this size. But we come in all shapes and sizes, just like you. Well, maybe a few more shapes and sizes than you humans. How come I've never read about you in the papers? I mean, even on the covers of the tabloids, there's no mention of you. Lots of aliens, but no tooth fairies. <laughs> and that's because humans can't see fairies unless a fairy wants them to. You humans have trouble believing in what you can't see. I can see you. Why did you allow me to see you? I didn't. I mean, I didn't do it on purpose. It just happened. I thought you said that it didn't happen unless the fairy wanted it to. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. Still doesn't explain why fairies and humans don't meet more often. It can be dangerous for the fairy. What's so dangerous when you can just fly away if you want to? If a fairy chooses to join the human host, she will gradually lose her fairy powers and become as mortal as you humans. Falling in love with a human can be very dangerous. Oh. Well, one thing's for sure. No one can boss you around. No? How's that? Well, you just fly away. Well, what if they can fly too, and faster than you? It's no different where I come from. There's always someone to boss you around. Things are not much different in the world I live in. Older means much wiser there, too. There is always someone who thinks she is smarter, telling me just what to do. sister to the park on Saturdays. So I'll be here about noon tomorrow? We have this big reunion thing going on, but I think I can get away. This scene takes place in a secluded cove in the forest. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. Can you believe that they assigned me to water duty? What a waste of creative flair. But that doesn't sound so bad to me. <laughs> Calvin and me had to clear the cow pasture so the pavilions could be set up. We was actually getting pretty good at it. You really got to get under it with the pail and shovel and then pitch it in the pail in one motion. I got so I could get it in the pail from five or six feet away. You know, one time I had Shut up, Holly! Yeah, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> Instead of being in charge, I'm carrying water. Do you believe that? And me, a troop leader. Assistant troop leader. Shut up, Harley. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to get on the inside track again. You going on a trip? Outside track, inside track. You can move up if you've got the knack. Inside track, inside track. Lay your plans right and you won't be back. You won't be back. No, you won't be back. You can reach the top, honest and true. If you like to mop, I don't, do you? Use your head instead of using your back. There's a path clearly marked inside track. 
there's a path clearly marked inside track. So, uh, so you're going on a trip? Shut, Shut up, Harley. <laughs> well, if we're not going anywhere, I think I'll just go see if they need any help carrying the food. You do that, Harley. <laughs> you know, you'll need a plan. Hey, what does Finbar value most? I don't know. He can have whatever he wants. Yeah. But, but what can he afford not to lose? Katie. Katie. What are you gonna do? You gonna kidnap her and hold her for ransom? Finbar would turn you into a toad. Mm. And an ugly one at that. <laughs> I'll just marry her. You got a better chance as a toad. You know she loves animals. I, I think I know a way to shake up Finbar enough to get him to order a command marriage. I just have to be in the right place at the right time. On the inside track. Inside track. <laughs> opens up continuing preparations for the upcoming dance. Mabel is carrying a pot for the table.
The fairies and trolls come in and take their seats to begin the banquet. I'm really tired and not very hungry anyway. Why do I have to attend this boring banquet? We have to set an example, Katie. It's our responsibility to safeguard the honor of this host. Besides, it's not that boring, is it? I'd rather watch grass grow. <laughs> I didn't choose to be responsible anyway. You did. It's not fair. Katie, I didn't volunteer to lead this host. I was chosen before we left the old country. Responsibilities don't always ask our permission first. Sometimes they choose us. And when this happens, we dismiss them at our own peril. Peril, Schmeril. I still don't That's that enough, I Katie. Be seated. Is that a royal command? Sit down! I am glad to see that the trolls have brought a hearty appetite. <laughs> I ask the all that is to be with us in our pleasures and our work throughout this centennial, and I welcome you all to the second of three nights. Congratulations. Um, I, I said, uh, congratulations. Why? Why? Uh, I, 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 I hear you're getting married. <laughs> you hear that? I'm getting married. <laughs> and who, pray tell, am I marrying? Uh, Finbar's daughter, Katie? <laughs> I'm here because I have to, not because Finbar and I are drinking pals. Boy, I I'm glad it's just a rumor. Uh, no offense, but, but I, I don't think we'd want you trolls controlling all the land that would surely be included in Katie's bride price. <laughs> Damn funny how these rumors get started. Mabel, would you sing something for us? Oh, oh really yes. Sing, sing, sing German and Grania.
He's been poisoned! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. You, you just fell asleep. Poison! I might have expected as much from you, typical Toothberry hospitality. Come down, Angle. Where's your sense of humor? You want a sense of humor? This banquet's a joke! <coughs> Do you insult this host? Not yet. We will return for the meeting. We'll talk then. <coughs> Play! Strongly. I can't fly with the host because I never get back. I'm no good at organizing things, so I can't be a home leader. Now I put people to sleep when I sing. Just the trolls. Oh, Katie. Well, turn off the waterworks, Mabel. Come on, it's not so bad. How can I face the host again? <sighs> Start your left foot stepping forward, then you join it with your right. Keep your chin up. Don't you hesitate, make your head and heart unite. I will sing a song of courage as I march to face my doom. In the melody, I will only see friendly faces in the room. On a song that gives you courage, march like yours a whole platoon. There's no time to waste, trouble must be faced, you just sing a different tune. There's no time to in a kind of natural rock amphitheater around the fire. I'd like to welcome all of you here. Every 100 years, human time, we look back on what we've learned, remind ourselves who we are, and renew our pledge to help our brothers in the outside world. As my last act of chairman of the 400th centennial, it is my duty to pass the scepter of order to the Chairman of the 401st. <laughs> the 401st Centennial meeting open. Oh. <laughs> Old business. <laughs> that we have some unfinished business to complete. We are owed a boon by the great and powerful Finbar. This boon was offered in return for our stopping the practice of training human children to a life of useful service. The powers know they certainly need training. However, out of our great love for our fellow hosts, we haven't taken, uh, invited, any human children to help us in the last hundred years. So we invoke the agreement and demand our boon. Chairman, I call upon the historian to speak the truth of this agreement so that we can finish our business and be off. 
I don't think my sensitive stomach will accept any more of this wonderful food and drink they serve here. Peace, Dorian! What? Peace, Dorian! What? Yes. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. At the dawn of time, the planets were. Not formed. that history! This history! Tell, deal, the centennial, Angor and Finbar! You're referring to the agreement between Finbar and Angor? Uh, talk agreement! Uh, yes, yes, agreement. Uh, so, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was decided at the last centennial, uh, 400, that the time had come again to stop bringing orphaned human children into our host. The trolls argued hotly against this crime and came to agreement only after a personal boon was offered by Finbar to Angor. Uh, we don't want any misunderstandings. What exactly is a boon? Yes, uh, uh, a boon. Yes, quite. I looked up. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Uh, a boon is defined as a wish or gift granted. The wish or gift may be anything within the giver's power to give, only accepted life will live. Finbar? Are you ready at this time to complete the agreement reached at the 400th centennial? I am. Are you ready at this time to complete the agreement which was offered by Finbar at the 400th centennial? I'm not getting any younger. Please answer formally. Yes. Get on with it. Have you taken a human child into your host from the moment of agreement until now? No. Is that satisfactory to you, Finbar? The centennial meeting was exchanged, uh, created to exchange truth. I must accept Angor's word or dishonor Finbar, the creators. However, Finbar, Finbar, do you, do you accept that Angor's half of the agreement has been met? Yes. <coughs> a boon has been offered and the time's met. Angor, do you choose to your boon now? I do. Then so choose. <laughs>
It's quiet in the fairy glen. The time is just before dawn, and the king is seated on his throne. Think. <coughs> Think there must be a door. There must be a way out. How could I have been so stupid? I can't allow him to take her. I won't. If she stays, the honor of the host will leave in her place, and without honor, we will cease to exist. If she goes, I will surely cease to exist. Every forest has a pathway through its dark and twisted center. Every home must have a doorway where the air and light can enter. Watch the beaver as he exits through his door below the stream. There must be a way through trouble, even though no way is seen. Every path must have an entrance, or no path can it be called. I think this one has no exit, just a gray and lonely wall. Just a gray and If we break, will the host break? What are you talking about, Father? Father, are you well? What's wrong? My beautiful daughter, Katie, I don't think I'll ever be well again. Do you remember hearing me talk about the practice of kidnapping human children for, for household servants and, and drudges? I've always been proud that you put a stop to that awful practice. It cost me more than I can afford to pay. Do you know what a boon is? A gift? It's a pledge made one's, against one's honor. When a king makes such a pledge, the honor of his host is at stake. I granted a boon to Angor in order to end the enslavings of humans by the troll host. Father, you've told me many times that our destiny is to join with the human host in completing our evolution. Uh, how can we if we're, still, if we're still taking their babies? Wasn't that worth anything? As a king, I agree. As a father, I never will. Whatever you decide, I will love and protect you always. What do I have to decide? Angor has chosen your hand in marriage as his boon. No. I can't. How can I? I can't marry that ugly old man. I won't. How could you do this to me? What about my life? What about what I want? I will not order you to this marriage, Katie. If you refuse, I will stay by you, even to the destruction of this host. I can only be true to myself. And that self loves you more than life itself, even more than honor. Oh, Father. The scene opens on Katie's room. The room is a typical fairy dwelling with carved wood furniture. It is filled with flowering plants. How could you do this to me, Father? I thought you loved me. I won't do it. I'll run away. I'll live with the humans. Or maybe I won't. This physical world isn't so great. Maybe I'll just quit. Now there's a great idea. Well, who's there? An old friend. Come out, out. I'm not in the mood to play games. <coughs> Calm down, Katie. I am out. You just can't see me. Now, since when were you frightened of the unseen? Do you remember when I first introduced you to the spirits of the water, the little undines? You couldn't see them either. You play with them quite often after that. Who are you? How do you know about that? Sit down, Katie, and concentrate. We need to talk. I remember my mother introducing me to the unseen. 
Do you always talk when you concentrate? Now be still. Close your eyes. Reach for the higher level as you've been taught. As Katie concentrates, her mother slowly becomes visible. I'm here, Katie. Who are you? Come on, Katie, you weren't that young when I left. Mother? You crossed over. How can you be here? Words, Katie, just words. It really isn't important anywhere you go. Uh, we're all just playing in different dreams. You have a very important role to play in this dream, and I was given permission to visit. Are your hugging stills, skills still as rusty as your concentration ones? Oh. Oh, Mother, I have to marry this awful, ugly old troll. And if I don't, Father will be disgraced and the host will die. What about my life? I can't live buried in a cave. And what have I done to deserve this? Oh, Mother, calm you down, Katie. Run away. Calm down and sit down, Katie. Do you remember the lullaby I used to sing to you? The, the one about the garden? There's a flower. to change dreams and stay there. But I can't do that, can I? Why not? Because I haven't finished this one yet. That's the Katie I know. Will I ever be happy again, Mother? Oh, reach inside the way I taught you. You can't tell me how it's going to turn out, can you? Mm. I can tell you that all is as it should be and that it will turn out well. When you doubt, ask your heart and trust what it tells you to go now. Will I see you again? I live in your heart, Katie, and you live in mine. We can always see each other there. I'll never allow my daughter to be taken against her will. <laughs> I'll turn you to salt before I let that happen. <laughs> Why, I knew you'd never hold to an agreement. Big words. Where's your honor now? If you don't honor our agreement, I will destroy this house. Stop! I've made a decision. I won't go with Angor and become his wife. No. <laughs> Enough. Why are we here? What is our purpose? If we fight, all will be lost. Look at you both. How like the humans you have become. 
You're forgetting. You're falling asleep. But Katie, you... How do you stop being who you are, Father? Only, only in illusion can we become who we're not. <laughs> will you at least allow me to say goodbye to my friends? You may. We will be leaving in one hour. That was a good idea, telling Angor you'd go with him. Uh, it gives us more time to get away. That's vintage Gorwin, always looking for an edge. It's no use. Her mind is made up. You remember what that's like. I don't suppose we could change your mind. I can't allow the destruction of the host. I guess I'm a tooth fairy after all. It makes me feel better to see you here, though. As much of a pain as you were when we were growing up, you were always there when I needed you. You didn't need my stupidity at dinner. Excuse me? I, I have a confession to make. Don't be silly, Gorwin. I know you were trying to use my influence with the king to get your position back. You told me no, so yourself. No, it's not that. Uh, I was the... Now, uh, I don't have much time, and I need a favor from both of you. Anything. What can we do to help? I want you to take a message to someone for me. It won't be very hard to find, but you will have to make yourself visible in order to give him the message. Your human friend? His name is Max. I agreed to meet him in the park today at noon. I'll never see him again. Please tell him, tell him that I'm going to be married and that I wish him well. Gorwin, will you see that Mabel gets to the park safely and return her here to the host? <laughs> is there nothing that we can do to change your mind? Nothing. And I will guide and guard Mabel so that she may deliver your message. Do we tell him the truth? What is the truth, Mabel? He wouldn't understand, and I don't want to cause him any more pain than I have to. Please, go, and know that I love you both. Okay. Katie, where are you? I'm in here, Father. I won't have this. I forbid this. Of all Father. the damn... Give me a hug. Oh. Katie, so like your mother, I, I never won an argument with her either. Are you sure about this? I think that she would approve, Father. The decision was mine and not yours. And besides, I'm not crossing over. I'll still be here. I won't be <coughs> there to protect you. Just like a man. What makes you think that I'm the one who'll need protecting? I love you, Father. Go and see that our leave-taking is not without incident. I need you to be brave for me. <laughs> Getting out of this marriage anyway. We don't need the land. How could Angor even think of marrying someone so ugly? I don't get it. You dimwit! Power is what I get. With trolls as stupid as you, I'll need it. Who is the most powerful fairy on the planet right now? Why, you are, I? No! The truth! Finbar? Right. And I have hated that fact every moment we've been here. I've schemed, I've threatened, <coughs> I've traded, I've argued, but I have never acquired the power to beat him. Until now, do you see? Uh, well, I was there. How do you remember to feed yourself? Well, <laughs> I get hungry and... If you hold a man's life in your hand, who holds the power? You do. What if that man values something or someone more than his life, and you have control over that someone? Your daughter? Eureka! Your life expectancy has just increased by one day. Keep this up, and you can expect to see the new moon. Yeah. 
smell sweet if you own it. He'd stay sharp if you own it. Not much chance he will own it. Power and soon it will be mine. Power. Such a lovely sound. Power. It's a joy profound. Oh, power can be found. Say thank you when they'd rather outrank you. Why they'll never outflank you, power. I think I've got it. Oh. Who ends up on the griddle? It's not much of a riddle. All it takes is a little power, and soon it will be mine. Satisfaction when you put one in traction. Breaking bones takes a little power, and it's so much fun. Ooh. Although waiting has paid off, so my smiles will all fade off. Why? Because of the change in power, and soon it will be mine. <laughs> Historian and the other fairy hosts enter the glen. I am ready to go with you, Angor. Will you interfere with our passage back to Troll Mountain? I will not. Come here, girl. I have a present for you. Come here. Angor reaches into a box lined in red velvet and takes out matching filigreed iron bracelets. No! <laughs> You may not, and may not harm her. They will cause her no pain. The iron will just remove her fairy powers until I am sure I can trust her. I I'm all right, Father. Let's go. The scene opens on the park as Mabel and Gorwin land. <laughs> It's not necessary. She told us that we would have to make ourselves visible to him. She told you that you would have to make yourself visible to him. She just told me to get you here and home safely. Uh, besides, it, it might frighten them to see us both appear. Humans are a little touchy about things like that, you know. <laughs> All right, Gorwin, if it frightens you that much, I'll do the visible alone. Don't be silly. I am, well, I was a troop leader, you know. <laughs> Tell me again how you made Troop Leader. What a beautiful day, Em. Not, mu not much wind yet, but maybe later. Keep an eye peeled for the fairy lady I told you about. Hi, my name is Mabel. I'm a friend of Katie's. Oh, oh, hello, I'm Max, and this is my sister Em. Where's Katie? Uh, that's what we've, I've come to talk to you about. <laughs> That's the first time she's gone to anyone since our folks died. You can see me? She can see me? Oh, what's happening to me? <laughs> you won't bite or anything. You look a little shaky. Hi, I'm Max. Hi, I'm Gorwin. I'm a tooth fairy. Yes, I know. It took a while for Katie to convince me, but I guess I should have figured she wasn't the only one. Speaking of Katie, where is she? She won't be coming, Max, and she sent us to tell you why. Is she hurt? No. She's getting married. Married? I'm not very experienced at these things, but when I spoke with her yesterday, I would have sworn she wasn't engaged or anything. <laughs> she wasn't, then. I don't understand. It's hard to explain, but she wanted you to know. Her father's the king of our host. He owed a debt to a leader of another host, and Katie paid the price by becoming the wife of this leader. Does she love him? Hardly. He's an ugly old troll. What century are you people living in? Arranged marriages went out with a horse and carriage. 
What kind of man would do this to his own daughter? Our king is kind and wonderful. He would have given his life for Katie. It was her decision to go. When was the wedding? The wedding won't be until after they get back to Troll Mountain. They just left this morning. You mean she's not married yet? Then we've got time. How far is it from here to Troll Mountain? I can borrow a car, and then... You'll never get there that way. Uh, even we're going to have trouble finding it. Y you see... Gorwin, this was Katie's decision, and we're not supposed to interfere. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's it? No fight? Just let her go? He's right, Mabel. We can't let Angor just take her away. She told us. Mabel, I have to hear this from Katie. At least help me to speak with her. Well... I'll act according to her wishes, I promise. But I have to hear them from her. Would you risk your life to speak with her? Yes. And your sisters? I can't leave you. Yet I have to see Katie. Please don't leave me behind. I'll be brave. <laughs> You're speaking. We're ready. Well? Just how are we going to get up to Troll Mountain without being seen? There's always an inside track. I'll think of something. That's comforting. <laughs> and uh, are you brave enough to fly with me? Don't worry. I'm a very strong flyer. I just can't figure out where to go. <laughs> Max, M. Gorwin, and Mabel are facing a rope bridge across a deep chasm. The bridge is supported in the middle by a rock formation and has an empty guardhouse on it. What do you see, Max? A shaky-looking rope bridge with a shack in the middle and some type of huge animal standing in front of the cave. It looks kind of like a bear, but it's too big to be a bear. I don't know how you do it, but you are some kind of special human. I, I mean, none of this is within the range of human sight. If we can't be seen, why can't we just sneak by them? Well, ogres don't see that well. Anyway, but, but they have an acute sense of smell, uh, kind of like a shark's. We need a diversion. Uh, Mabel, you and Em keep an eye on our ogre friend there, and, and come warn us if anyone comes across the bridge. Max, let's go see if we can find that diversion. We're looking for Brisbane. It's a distant cousin of the plant I, I think you call stinkweed? Uh, oh, here we are. Careful. Careful, don't, don't squeeze the buds. These plants make a skunk smell wonderful. <laughs> uh, uh, that's plenty. Now, let's set the trap and get back. Remember the last time you used Brisbane? Sure. Uh, well, we set a trap for Katie, and, and only Katie sent Melba, uh, the cook, through the pass. <laughs> Galvin Harley and I ate burnt food for weeks because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a chance here? Well, I, I think we can get in. It's kind of up to Max. I'll lead the ogre uh, through that low canyon out there where we put the Brisbane. I I'll fly over the Brisbane, and the ogre will step in it. Uh, while he's busy pawing at his nose, we'll get in. I'll help you. Uh, not this time, Max. Uh, no offense, but you smell like a human. Uh, if he smells you, he'll sound the alarm, and then we're finished. Gorwin lays the trap, and the ogre steps in. He howls, and the group enters the troll. <laughs> not a sound now. Single file. Gorwin, Mabel, Max, and M move along a passageway until they reach a balcony overlooking a giant cavern. Angor and Katie are seated in thrones at the end of the cavern. The middle of the cavern is filled with trestle tables at which the trolls are noisily eating. It's only yours, Max. We wait here until they fall asleep. Then I'll sneak down and speak to her. What if they leave a guard awake? I'll just have to deal with him. I have a better way. I can put them all to sleep. Uh, Mabel, Mabel, you did it once. You don't know it'll work again. Uh, what if it doesn't? We're not in the best spot here, kind of between a rock and a hard place. I don't have a choice. At midnight, the three days of Centennial will be over. Beyond that time, there is no hope of an honorable end, no matter what we do. What kind of magic will allow you to put all of those trolls to sleep? I can sing them to sleep. Can you do it from here? Okay, then let's do it. 
Ken, I need you to stay here and watch over Mabel. specimen indeed. Well, you're not a fairy lad. And you must leave now, before they wake up. How old are you? Oh, I will be 97 this May. Oh, oh come on, we got to get out of here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we better hurry up. I, I think Mabel's running out of air. I'll explain later. Right now, we need to be someplace other than here. Can you fly? No, not with these bracelets on. Mabel! You and Gorin, Gorin will have to fly Gaul and Emma Cross. Remember, if anything happens to us, you've got to get Gaul, Gaul back to Finbar before midnight. It's our only chance. The trolls come boiling out of their den. Max and Katie run across the bridge and take shelter behind the shack and bear on some fire. The ground shakes and the wind and the bridge, the bridge sever and fall with Katie, Max, and Bill. The rest of the party is standing in the clearing at the far side of the bridge. The middle of the bridge is beginning to shake. Take all of them to the king. We'll follow you if we can. Just then, a rock shaking loose from the cliff above. Norman, Mabel, and Anne hits Norman on the Ow! Oh! Oh! I can't see. I can't find the way back without you. But you must. You must. I can still fly. I I'll just grab your skirt. Let let's wait a few minutes. Maybe your sight will return. We don't have a few minutes. Uh, by your love of Katie, we have to leave now. Really? She'll help us. Okay, I'm going. But we'll probably end up in Africa. <laughs> I'll go see if there's anything we can use in that guardhouse. Maybe a rope or something. Max dodges an arrow and falls into the small shack. He comes out with a tarp and some sticks. Can you fly at all? With these bracelets on, I can just about help, I'm afraid. It might be all we need. What is that? It's a kite. Have you ever seen one? I watched you fly that small one in the park. What are you going to do with this one? We can fly it to the other side of the bridge. There's no way that that thing is going to support the two of us. Just add as much lift as you can. I think it'll get us across. I don't think this is such a good idea. Better than staying here. Hold on. Now run! Bringing two humans into the host is an unheard of occurrence. Humans? Gorwin, there better be a very good reason for this. Y your Majesty, uh, we went to the, the troll den against your will. Uh, we, we tried to talk Katie into running away with us. She refused until we met Gaul. Question him, and all will be clear. Uh, who are you, human? Well, I am called Gaul, and until tonight, I served in the Hall of Trolls. How long have you served? All my life. I have no memory of my human parents. How old are you? I will be 97 this May. Yes. Well yes. done. Good. Where is she? We left them behind. She's with another human. Uh, Anger and his trolls are following them. Mabel, Mabel, come show me where they are. Oh, I wish 
wish my father were here. Your wish is my command. Come, let's go home. We have to prepare for guests. <laughs> Silvery life. Come out! I know you're here. I demand my just due. Return what is rightfully mine. Did I hear you demand your just due? You did. I always knew that you were without honor. Did you think you could get away with this kidnapping? Kidnapping? How appropriate of you to use that word. Stop stalling and bring me what you owe me. In time, in time. But first, there's someone I'd like you to meet. I don't want to meet anyone. Just return my bride to me and I'll go. I don't want to be here any longer than I have to. Surely you can spare just a minute to see an old employee, one who has been with you for such a long time. I, uh, I can explain that there's been a mistake here. There has been a mistake which I'm going to remove once and for all. Don't destroy us. The Earth needs us. He's right, Father. Don't let your anger rule here. We are all one or we are all the illusion. You taught me that. Is everything I taught you going to come back to haunt me? Surely not everything. <laughs> Go back to your mountain and work twice as hard to heal the part of the Earth you are responsible for. I want to see the land as joyful as it was when we arrived. We'll be watching you. Thank you. Oh, we will work harder than ever. I know you will, but I want you to have a present that may remind you when you're tempted to forget. Benbar gestures and the iron bracelets appear on Angor's wrists. Now leave my sight. Owen. Yes, Your Majesty. The inside track only has room for one, and it's sometimes very dark, is it not? It is, Your Majesty. You disobeyed my orders for a second time. Yes, Your Majesty. But I believe that your motivation was love. Sometimes it takes great darkness to allow us to see. Return what was lost. I, I, I can see. I can see. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Gorwin. Yes, sir. You will still finish out your month's grounding. Uh, yes, sir. But perhaps you and I can catch a game. They may even make it into the playoffs. <laughs> With pleasure, Your Majesty. Mabel? Ah, uh, Mabel. Your steadfast friendship and beautiful voice have made this a very happy day for this host. I hereby appoint you official songmistress. Please uh, step forward, human. You are the first humans ever to be present at a gathering of the Tooth Fairy host. How is it that we are visible to you? I don't know, Your Majesty. My mother used to tell us stories about fairies, but they were just stories. You have done us a great service that we will never forget. May we do something for you. Your Majesty, I love Katie, and I would have your blessings so that I may ask her to marry me? You are a brave and truthful human, and I can see in my daughter's eyes that she loves you as well. But I cannot bless this union. I cannot be the one to take the fairy heritage from my daughter's hands. As for anything else within my power, and I will grant it. But not this. There is nothing else. Come on, Em, let's go. Boy, am I tired of everybody making decisions for me. How about asking me what I want? How can I ask without the king's permission? One word in front of the other. <laughs> Katie, will you marry me? Yes. Max and Katie and Grace are lifted into the air two or three feet. How can you give up flying like this? I'm not flying. Max and Katie fall on the ground. The technique's not so great. I flew. I can fly. How can this be? Katie, you weren't surprised. When we jumped off the cliff holding onto the kite, there was no wind. With the bracelets on, I couldn't have helped other than reducing my weight. As we jumped, the kite headed for the ground and then all of a sudden changed course and flew us to the opposite cliff. 
I was no wind that lifted you, Max. It was you. How can I fly? I'm not of your world. You shouldn't be able to see us, and yet you can. Pretty lady says to tell you my name. I was told that your name is M. My real name is Michaela. I just use M for short. Michaela. Silence. For whom were you named? My grandmother's name was Michaela. She left me to drop it with my picture. May I? Your grandmother what, what is my wife's best friend. <laughs> em, uh, may I call you Michaela? Would you like to stay with us? <laughs> and as for you, young man. Yes, sir. You'll have to learn to fly much better if you're not going to be a disgrace to this host. <laughs> you can count on it. There is a place where 